How's it going guys? It's your boy Fixit Daniel and today is an exciting day. Today we're going to be getting this bike running again. I'm super happy to show it to you guys. It's been a long time coming. I think we get finally got it together. So let's check it out. Thank you guys and welcome if you guys have not been with me on this journey on this scooter, please go down and like and subscribe. Check it out. Go back to the beginning and see this build from the very beginning to now where we're at. But today, we are super excited to get this bike back and running, back on the road. Hopefully, we got a little bit more power because we just upgraded this bike from a 250 to a 300. I know that's not that much, but I'm hoping that in horsepower and torque that we can obviously get more out of it and hopefully go a little further. So let us go check out the bike and look at it. All right, guys. So this has been a long, long process. We have been working on this bike since December of last year. It's when I got the bike. And then from then on till now, we've been ripping it, replacing it, rebuilding it, doing everything that we possibly can to get this bike back on the road. We are so close to getting this bike on the road and I'm going to show you guys what we've been doing so far. We have definitely have had a long fighting battle with this thing and winning some, losing some, but I think today is going to be a total win. So we pretty much got everything back together. We got it all on there. I have not turned this over yet. I really wanted to bring you guys along with me on this because we have done a lot. And we're going to, before we start this up, we are going to explain what I've done and why the issues we had so far. So let us get down there and I'm going to show you and explain to you what we've been doing so far. Okay, guys. So we're going to get down here and I'm going to explain to you what we've been doing so far. So the whole entire, if you have not seen my last video, please watch that. It'll help you get to speed of what I'm about to explain. So pretty much we've been dealing with this area. So in my last video, and I'll get you up to speed, but if you have not watched it, please watch it, but I'm gonna explain it. So I took this for our last ride and it did pretty good, but towards the end of the run, headed home on the long stretch, we had an issue with the flywheel. So the flywheel had not been torqued down by my, by my, by me. I'd have a long enough uh, socket, but I finally got one, got it on there. But in the process of the uh, flywheel not working um, and not on there tight, I broke the keyway. So there's a keyway that holds the flywheel on to the crank that keeps the flywheel in place. So when you're doing your timing, it's in the right timing. Otherwise, it was just free spin. So the really only purpose of that flywheel is just to maybe help with balancing. But it's also to help um, when you do your timing, when you take this off and time it. You're at top dead center. You know you're at top dead center. You might have to take everything off to figure that out. So that was the process, and that's what the port of the keyway was. So I had gone to an auto parts store to get a actual universal one that they had that somewhat fit. So I did some cutting, some um, off-camera cutting, and I got it all together, got it in there, and um, and everything. But Something happened with the flywheel, um, so it got it on there nice and tight. Everything seemed like it was fine, but for some odd reason, everything was completely locked up. I couldn't even turn it over. I couldn't use the um, my, my crank on the other side to crank it. Nothing was moving, and I thought for the longest time it was my starter. So I went and ordered a new starter, thinking that was the issue. Get the starter, get it put in place. The starter didn't fit. And then if something kept telling me that something else is wrong with it, it's just I can't figure out what it was. So I had to take everything back apart, took the flywheel off, made sure it turned over on its own free will, and it did. So I was like, okay, it's all turning over like it's supposed to. So it was something with the, um, uh, so basically the there's a, a sprocket that helps you turn the starter wheel and turns the crank and everything else, it wasn't aligned right. So in some kind of way, it got pinched to the point where it locked everything up. So in that same sense, when I was getting that all taken care of and put back together 
and everything, everything was working good. I finally got it lined in. I put the starter back in its place and got it all keyed in, lined up with the sprockets. Everything was looking beautiful. Got that on there, and then I decided that since my keepers came, or my uh, my keys came, I went ahead and tried to figure out which key actually fit. And lo and behold, I got lucky. One of them actually does fit. So I believe it was the, it was this one right here. This four, this four, six and a half, 16, that one actually worked. Um, I think it was that one. It was either this one or it was that one. I want to say it was this one, um, but this one actually, it actually worked. I didn't think it was going to fit and I didn't have to cut it or anything. Put it right in there, got the flywheel all set and then it locked in place. Then I bolted it down. And I made sure before everything was done, before I put the cover over it, everything turned over, everything turned over fine, got everything back together, got it all back in there, and before I even turned, before I even uh, made sure it was ready to turn over, I made sure I did one more last crank turn, now it's sitting at top dead center, everything's back together. So I am confident that everything is fine, and the starter actually works, because I did a little test turnover, and it actually does turn, so that's a good sign. So... That's pretty much, in a nutshell, of an off-camera what I had to do to get that going. I know that's a little long-winded, and I'm apologizing for that, and I had to do this all off-camera because I didn't know what I was running to, I didn't know how to fix it, and I didn't have time to fix camera shot and shoot. Um, you know, uh, so I wish I had someone else holding the camera so I could do that, but I didn't. So I'm hoping that my explaining to you guys actually worked. Um, so, um, so yeah, I know it's a little long winded, but it really, in a nutshell, that's how it was. The flywheel, um, something with the flywheel and the sprockets just was not sinking right and it was locking up. I mean, it was like literally something was locking up and I thought I was going to take the whole entire thing back apart, but I actually didn't have to. Um, it just took me some time tearing back the stator, the flywheel and making sure it turns over freely, did it. Then I put these new keys in. Um, I know I don't need all these keys. I just got them because that's how it came with the kit. That's how it came. So um, yeah, everything is running. Everything is uh, everything is together really, really good. So I'm hoping that it runs really good. So now, now that everything is ready to go, the only thing we need to do is turn it over, hear how it sounds, and then hopefully we can go take this for a spin yet again and get this going. So let us get up. Let's get this thing set so we can actually turn it over with you guys and see how this is gonna run. All right guys, so we're gonna check this out. Let me crack this door open. All right, so we're gonna get this thing running. Hopefully everything is good. So let's get you guys over here. All right, let's see what we got. Lights on. Starting on, here we go. Three, two, one. Okay. We're good. No more of the slapping noise. Yeah, no slapping. It sounds really good. Let's give it a few revs. We got it. It's running. Doesn't sound like there's any issues whatsoever. Guys, we are good. All right, let's turn it off so we can smoke. <laughs> it's running. It's running and it sounds really good. I turned it off and I want to get all the smoke inside the garage. But man, it is running. Um, it's been a long time. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Um, we got it back up with no issues. Everything seems to be running, no, no obscene noises or anything. Really, honestly, the only really way to get this running is to um, 
to get this, this tested is to take a first spin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the garage door a little more. I'm gonna come back when we're warmed up and we're gonna check it then, make sure all the timing and everything is right. Make sure we have to do any adjustments because these are the adjustments that I had when I had it in there. So um, we'll see how it goes. Okay guys, so we got it running still, warming up, um, getting there pretty good. Okay guys, so now we got it running. It's running pretty good, it's getting warmed up, it's not there yet. Um, man, there it goes, right there. It's kicking in. We're about, about halfway in between, I'd say maybe, a, I don't know, 1600. So, a little bit higher. So it's running really, really good. It'll give us some revs. It's running really good. I can't wait to take this for a spin. Like, this is going to be great. Guys, I am super, super happy with this. It is running really, really well. Um, we did. The, we think maybe once we take it for a spin, we'll see how it tune, how the tune is. We may have to do some adjustment on the tune. Um, but for our so far right now, where it's sitting at, it's actually pretty good. Um, I think it, I think it'll actually be okay. Uh, now, one of the other things that I think that if it doesn't have a little bit more power, we may. Excuse me. We may have to upgrade the um, the carburetor to a slide pole. I'm still looking for that because the top of the seat is um, gonna probably interfere with the way the cable goes. So I'm trying to see if I can find a lower one, or I may have to modify the seat, which I really don't want to. Maybe it won't hit it at all. Maybe we could lower it down on the top just a little bit. Maybe cut that rubber top and lower it down a little bit, so that way it was it clears because it's so close. But the carburetor that I have is a 24. It kinda doesn't mock up very well. So I'd have to get a um, 30 millimeter or 34 or 38. That's the kind of rim I'm having because I keep looking online and some, some of the 30 millimeter carburetors can handle a 300 cc. But then some don't. Some I may have to get like a 38, a 36, you know, something a little, a 32 just a little bit more to get out of there. And I'm trying to figure out which one do I want to get. Do I want to get a, um, a nib, a Cooney, um, a PEK, or some other kind, just to get more power out of it. Because in some of those carburetors, they can generate a, like 10 to 15% more power over the OEM carburetor. So, and it'll add more power to the bike just by changing out the carburetor. And then we got a cold air intake, so that'll add a little more power. And then if we ever get a, a high performance exhaust, which it is in the future, we'll, we'll get more power. And that carburetor can handle the adjustments just by changing out some jets, a little bit of tuning tweaks, and then you got some power. So I've used those in the past. I used the nibs. They work really well. I think I had a Makuni that worked okay. So I know that those high performance carburetors will surprisingly go overwhelmingly more than the, the regular one that's in there right now. So I definitely want to get one of those. So we'll definitely look into that. Um, I do have the cable already. I just need to get the carburetor and hopefully that it'll clear. Because if it doesn't clear and it pushes down on the throttle, we could have an issue. But if it doesn't, and it still pushes down on it but doesn't pull on it, then we'll, we'll roll with it. We'll make sure it's secure nice and tight and then we'll go with it. So that's the next step. We're just gonna check out the power on this one and then get get um go from there so right now i'm gonna pull this out get my helmet and gear on and then we're gonna take this thing for a spin and see how the power and the reliability of it is all right guys we're about to roll this bike out i'm gonna take it for a quick spin um i'm going to just uh, take it for a quick spin around get a little gps uh speed see if there's anything we can get out of it we're not going to do the full top end run yet so um we're just gonna take it for a cruise around we're just gonna see how it goes and then we're gonna come back and we'll talk about it. So let me go do that, we'll be right okay, back. Okay guys, so we are back from the ride. It came out really good, nice strong power. Everything seems to be running really, really good, um, reliable, all that stuff. 
there are a few uh, things that that we need to take take a um, take a look at and need to do. Um, one of them is I think we need to figure out the carburetor issue. I think if we get an aftermarket carburetor, if we can get some more power out of it. Um, so I'm gonna look into the different kinds of slide pulls. The seat does kind of sit over the carburetor, just a little bit like a bowl. So the, the seat kind of bowls, bowls up and then the, it sits down over it. So the problem with the, with the slide pulls is that they're, they are on top. So even if I do a 90, it's gonna, go, it's gonna do like an S going down into it. And sometimes if they get, if they have something sitting on top of it, I could ease that seat could easily be pushing down on the throttle and raising up the slide pull, not from the car, not from the throttle way, but from the slide pull way. So when you start it, it will just go revving really high. Or if I put the seat on it, it could cause the throttle to go revving up high. So we're gonna have to figure out that issue. Um, I would really love to get a slide pull. I know that's gonna work in my favor to give me more power. We're just gonna have to figure out how to way to route it with the seat sitting on it. And I hate to cut into that seat. I really, really hate to cut into that seat because that's where all the storage goes. And I did that on the 90 and I, I literally went from storage to no storage. So, um, but this one's got a bigger storage container. So I'm hoping that maybe I could find some way to make it work. Um, who knows? Well, we'll have to figure it out. But, um, but that's one of the issues. The other issue is we need to get some more speed out of it. So we need to. I need to look into finding some um, uh, some the gear up, and you really need to find another gear up that'll fit for that. And if we could get it to get it like the one I bought, that's thirty five percent more in speed and power and everything, and that can achieve our speed just by the gear, just by the gearing. With leaving the carburetor alone and, and leaving that all, if we got the ge the transmission to give us more speed, then we could. That would be the end. We just do the gear, and then boom, we'd be done. We would have 35% more speed, maybe do some lightweight um, roller weights, and then we'd be in business. We would actually could cheat the speed because I did that on the 90. I geared it up, I did lightweight pull um, roller weights, and we got some serious speed out of it. So I really need to dive into that more and see if I can find one. Um, and then, um, so it'd be lightweight roller weights. There's a kit I found that actually has the clutches, the lightweight um, roller weights, and everything for this bike. So I'm definitely thinking about doing that. We may go ahead and do the um, that jet kit that I bought, I haven't used yet. We may go and do that as well, just to see what that is with just the base, and then go from there. So we may have to try that out as well. I'll look into that. Um, and then that's pretty much it. If we can achieve those three things, get some power in the, out of the carburetor, and some speed out of the transmission, I think we can achieve that highway speed that we're trying to get this bike to be where it's originally supposed to be. Um, I think the 300 is a good power. Um, I think I saw a bigger 300. It was like, this is a 73. I think there was a 90 or something like that millimeter um, uh, 300 piston kit, but I'd have to replace the whole entire thing. I have to start all over again. I have to replace the piston housing and the valves just for that extra um, CC, uh, the extra millimeters, which is not bad, but I don't want to stress this motor out any more than it has to. I think a 300 is good. Um, some say 400, but uh, some have, uh, um, there are some things you could do with 400, but the 400 is a little different with the piston housing. The way the cooling goes is a little different. Um, the design is the same, but if 400, that would be, that would be through the moon. That would be definitely getting us some power. In. But um, the problem is, is that um, I think with, even though we got the power, we can have all the power in the world. I could put a 600 in that, but if we're not getting the speed and the speed, the gearings is just maxed out, then we're not gonna be able to get it. So I believe the gearing and the roller weights and just carburetor would be perfectly fine. So we're gonna stick with the 300 that we got. We're gonna deal with that. It's got us, give us some power. We just need to get the gearing and the transmissions and stuff all in sync to give us, us more power. And that's gonna achieve our speed. So we're gonna look into that, get that going. But guys, this bike is so totally awesome. It's a great running bike. It's really cool. We still have to do a few more things. I need to get the rear tire done. I may get both tires done just, just to get them, keep them consistent. Then we need to you know do some greasing on the front and then we need to get it uh, inspected, and I think we'll be good. Maybe check the brakes, make sure the brakes are good, clean the fluid, 
take it to a shop, maybe have them do it, and then I'll replace the pads and stuff, just to make sure everything's really good, and then we should be able to ride this thing. I think when we get to all the fairings and stuff on there, that will make it a little bit more aerodynamic, and then we should maybe achieve some of that cut and air speed and get it, get it running the way it's supposed to. But guys, that is it. I know this video was a little short, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on this is running, and it's running really well. So if you guys need help on this, please go watch my other videos and check them out if that helps you out. If not, please go in the comments, let me know. Um, I've done all this stuff on my own, no help from anybody, just doing a bunch of research, a bunch of video watching, and a lot of digital book reading on the, on the manuals and just figuring it out. And I've obviously got this thing running really, really well. So guys, that's it. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. Please go like and subscribe my videos. Check them out. Follow me on Instagram at FixItDaniel as well right there. Please go and follow me on that. I um, post pictures on there and videos on there as well. You guys can comment me on there as well. And you can comment me on YouTube. With that all being said, you guys have a good and blessed day. And I'm going to see you on the next fix. Until then, peace.